to Modern Wall Street's Trader Talk. Welcome to Super Thursday. A lot of events in queue today. And joining me is Matt Cheslock from Virtue Financial to sort it all out for us. Matt, it's nice to have a guy like you on a day like this. Well, thanks for having me. It's uh, not so super yet, uh, but uh, maybe we'll get there by the end of the day. Right, and the first event was the ECB. No major developments coming out of there. However, they are going to be continuing to pump more in their their economy, maybe more than we than we expected. Now, Comey is testifying right now, and we have the UK election. Two related events have caused major market mix-ups before. So, what developments are you looking out for? Well, you know, the ECB actually to go back to them a little bit. They had some interesting um, things to work out over the last couple of days. The bank failure in, in uh, Spain yesterday, uh, and then one where they bailed out uh, one in Italy. Maybe not the ECB themselves, but these are two banks that are failing here. So that's something to keep an eye on. That, that's really getting overlooked or maybe brushed under the rug. So I'm really going to keep my eye on the financial um, uh, banks that are in the under the ECB domain. So um, I think that's more important. It didn't move the market yet, uh, but what happens if a bigger one goes? So go back to your second point um, with uh, the Comey testimony and what we expect tonight out of uh, Britain. Uh, right now, the Comey testimony has been underwhelming as far as market moving events. Uh, we got testimony out of him yesterday, the, uh, the early transcripts, and nothing was a surprise. And I think as long as that continues and nothing gets rattled uh, in the live testimony, the market's really in showing you that we're not really, it's not really a factor. And you make a very good point there about Draghi. He did decline to comment on the banks, correct? Uh, yes, for now. I, th I, th I think because it's so, it's, uh, so early in these stages, uh, and I don't think he wants to scare anyone, but it does bear watching. Um, you know, you never like to see bank failures. Sure, absolutely. Okay, well, we will watch out for that. Now, like you said, it isn't so super so far today, but a lot of investors are on the edge of their seats and not necessarily in a bad way, but perhaps there's going to be some nice points of entry if we do see a significant tumble today. So what would you recommend as a comfort, comfortable pullback to start entering into the market if we miss the past seven months? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> It, we keep waiting for this correction to happen. We got one day of it about three weeks ago, last, you know, three weeks ago Wednesday, uh, and that was short-lived. And we've seen the market take out new highs all along here. So uh, you have to be willing to think that the market is going to continue to trade on fundamentals, which is important, and maybe not so much on all this geopolitical and political stuff that's happening. Um, you know, oil would be the one other sector that I would really watch here uh, because I think that could be the next sector that takes us to a higher level if we get some clarity in it. Uh, now we have some concerns about OPEC and, and the strength of their of the cartel uh, with what's going on in Qatar. Um, I think that's important. Russia had some comments yesterday about uh, eventually we're just gonna, all going to be going for market share again. So um, if oil can firm up, we've seen the financials firm up. That took the market to a high yesterday. You know, when the, the two and 10 year spread uh, widened a little bit, financials got a bid to them. So that's how quickly this market turns. I don't think you want to be um, invested too heavily at this point. I don't think this is your entry point. Uh, but on pullbacks, I think you probably still can, can dollar cost average or get in, start legging into positions uh, at least right now, that the underpinnings of the market are, are fairly solid. Okay, and you mentioned energy. Any other sectors you like, like semiconductors? That's been a that's been a hot one recently. Yeah, I mean they've been acting super. You know they had their their hiccup. You know back in February, you know March, and they've been on fire again. Uh, the and and the technology. Uh, you know we saw Alibaba today. You know they had uh, re report great forward looking. Um, you know, outlook. And that stock has performed pretty well. And that's been under the radar. It hasn't been an Amazon. It hasn't been a Facebook. You know, it hasn't been one of the big ones, but it's one of the largest companies out there in that space. And now that's getting the love. So um, while we're not seeing sell-offs in Apple and Facebook, we're seeing the buy side go right to Alibaba. So that's what happens in these sectors. Um, you know, retail had some good news today. You know, Nordstrom, if they're going private, that had a huge uptick. So there's some underpinnings of this market that are acting pretty well. And you just have to be able to be nimble enough to, to trade in them. Awesome. Now that we covered opportunities, I'd like to touch on some safety ventures. Besides gold and uh, and bonds, are there any other safe havens that, I, I, you know, Bitcoin was one of them. I don't know how it's doing today. I haven't checked, but would you recommend any other secret safe havens? Wow. To consider Bitcoin a safe haven, you know, <laughs> the volatility in that is off the charts. Um, you know, I was talking with someone yesterday who's actively involved in, in, in the mining space, and they were anticipating, you know, something in silver. And, you know, why that hasn't 
hasn't been a bigger mover. Uh, gold looked like it was going to break out uh, and confirm the breakout on Tuesday above, uh, I think it was 1289, and we thought maybe gold might have a leg up. Uh, the gold trade is a little conflicted because we have the JDXJ rebalance next Friday. So that trade is it's much bigger picture than just gold. Uh, but but silver may be something that's had industrial properties um, and you know some big investors in the silver space. So that would be something maybe to keep an eye on. Okay, now are precious metals miners going in the same direction as the actual commodities? We, we haven't seen it yet because of the JDXJ rebalance okay. that's going to occur. So it's been a, big, a conflicting trade. If gold was going to break out, they weren't following through. Uh, maybe we get some clarity on that at the end of next week, uh, and maybe we can start to see them trade with, with, the, uh, with the commodity itself. Yeah, that, that's very interesting. Okay, Matt, well, thank you for giving us some clarity for the future and today. We always love to have you on the show. Very popular with our viewers. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Glad to be here. This is the Boz on location reporting live from the New York Stock Exchange.